that's something to pass around too. Um, so, hi, I'm Colin. Um, I have this project idea. Well, so I've been really obsessive about QR codes recently. You can pass these. Um, I have like a QR code scanning app for scanning like the receipt lotteries uh, that I made. Um, and after I made that, I was really interested in how uh, QR codes work and like what, like how the data is actually encoded inside. And after moving to Taiwan, one thing that I always notice is, uh, well, two things that I always notice are QR, code, QR codes are everywhere. And there are also like seals everywhere. Like they're a very common thing. So I kind of had the idea of it would be really cool if there was some way to combine both of them. Um, so I set about making my own uh, QR code. Actually, some half of this cut off, so let me scroll up so if you're trying to scan that one. Oh, I guess it's not. Uh, my own seal that is also a QR code. So I could stamp it and people could scan it. Um, so what I'm, people are passing around right now is actually a prototype of a stamp that's an earlier version that's just a regular QR code. It's not uh, kind of special, um, but I'll kind of go into a little bit of the details. So actually, when I had this idea, I did a little bit of research, and there's nothing like the QR or like the Chinese seals, but someone actually did research and had a very similar idea to exactly what I had, which uh, Russ Cox, I think he's like a, a Go developer at Google, um, and basically he had the idea of, oh, can we take the data that's inside of the QR code and basically use it to control the image. So that's just this kind of the same goal that I have. Um, and I'll go down. So basically, the idea behind it, it for, for my set is, OK, start with like you know the artwork you want to draw. Um, and so actually, uh, there's a couple things about the structure of the QR code uh, for how it works. So inside of the QR code, uh, there's a bunch of error correction. And I'll flip back to this blog post because actually I think all of his diagrams are a lot better. Um, well, even before that, there's a bunch of different versions of QR codes. Um, and the different versions actually correspond to the width. Um, so like this is version 1, uh, which is like 21 by 21 pixels. Um, and then version 2 is the first one that adds this little alignment thing. Once you get to like this size, you have multiple alignment things. And then here, actually, you can see when they go from version 5 to 6, the way the data is encoded in version 5, it's all data and then error correction. Um, but in version 6, the error correction and data is like interspliced. Um, so I'm limited for like the project I want to do. I'm limited to using QR codes that are this size um, because I can. it's easier to control the data than at, uh, than controlling the error correction bits. Um, but actually, there's a trick. So I, before I um, found this blog post, I was doing a bunch of research into how the error correction works and trying to understand that. And when I found this blog post, I was really surprised that there actually is a way, a trick that you can do to control the error correction. Um, so the error correction uses uh, Reed-Solomon error correction, which uses like uh, finite field arithmetic and Galois theory and all this stuff that I don't really know that well. Um, but in this blog post, they kind of talk about how you can do this trick uh, with the error correction. But well, so if you don't care about the error correction stuff, um, you can basically draw it in this narrow band in the center. So here is like uh, for this QR code thing to work. Here is going to be like the URL part, and it kind of works based off the idea. Of this is a hack where you have the URL, and then you have a pound sign. Right? So in a URL, if you have a pound sign, anything after that is basically a section. So it'll click, it'll, it's basically ignored by your browser. Um, so after the pound sign, we can then encode a bunch of junk data, which will get translated to this image, um, or will get encoded to that image. Um, and then after that, we have all the error correction stuff. So we're limited to this amount of space. Um, and in this blog post, they realized that you can do this trick with how the error correction uh, is calculated that it's actually, you can like do an XOR trick where the data that's being, that's here can be like translated. 
um, kind of going to gloss over that because I don't really understand it. But basically, you can widen the image if you want by doing some math and XOR with your data with the error correction bits. Um, I don't actually need to do that for like my stamp thing, so I didn't actually really understand that very well. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of show some of the other things. So uh, after generating like my like stamp in a pixel editor, um, I exported it to a PNG, um, and then there's like I guess two key steps for getting the art that I have and encoding that into the QR code. Because um, this guy, he had this project for how to do this, but actually it's like back in 2013 and all the code's like gone. Um, it was on Google code or whatever and it got kind of deleted or whatever. Um, so I had to rewrite it from scratch. Um, but basically there's two things for how I encode this data. Um, and it's, um, there's two parts. So there's mapping the pixels. So figuring out which pixel corresponds to which bit on the QR code. Um, or sorry, yeah. Bit, bit. So like, um, so like here is the example. If you scan the my little thing, it's like my website and then a pound sign and then like a bunch of numbers, right? So we have to figure out how to go from this pixel artwork to that bunch of numbers for encoding that as a QR code. Um, so basically, uh, there's a bunch of math. For <laughs> I, I got that to work. Um, but the I'll, I'll go to his artwork because his diagrams are going to make it much easier to explain. So the bits are laid out like this in a zigzag pattern. Um, and then there's like this alignment block you get to skip over. Um, and instead of like figuring out exactly how the bits laid out, I actually just brute forced it because it took me, I, I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out how it laid out and realized I could just code it in like five minutes, brute forcing it, let it run for 10 seconds, and then have a mapping from the like the x y coordinates on the plane to what uh, what bit I would have to change in the URL, um, and so that's what I did instead of having to like worry about like what bits I need to change. Um, there's a couple other rules for like how this masking works. So this is like the reason why most QR codes, when you scan them, they don't like look like junk. There's like a masking that happens after the fact when you encode the data, um, and there's a, basically a scoring system for you, how you figure out what mask to apply. Um, and basically in the code I'm using to generate the QR code, I'm fixing the mask to uh, this, this pattern. So I don't have to worry about that at all. I just have this fixed mask and I can just encode the same data and then twiddle some bits and get the artwork. Um, so, so the, I, the reason for the mask uh, is so that like there's a bunch of different properties about a QR code that you don't you that make it easier to scan right so like if you only have uh, like for example in the in the artwork I have um, there's like big blotches of oh, sorry, big blotches of like white and stuff like that right so big long segments of like the same color are actually really difficult for a QR reader to scan properly. Um, so the masks are basically to have a scoring system. You apply all the all the masks on your data. It figures out which mask applied to the data gets the best score, and then it'll pick that when you encode a QR code. Um, so we're kind of basically, you know, not encoding the data in the spirit of the QR spec, uh, so that we can get a pretty image. Um, so that could potentially mean that the resulting QR code is more difficult to scan or might not scan at all, but, you know, so like you make some artwork and then you have to test if it actually scans properly or not. Um, yeah, so the, the purpose of it is to make it easier to scan. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I just thought it was kind of cool. And I have, I can show you, so I have like the little pixel editor I have here. Um, this one is the art, artwork I have. 
Um, and I'll, I'll modify this a little bit so you can see it like running. So I'll add a, like a line there. And I can export this. Um, oh, I'm blocking your video, I guess. Yeah. Um, export that. Then I have some code. Just rerun that and flip to my, uh, my stamp. And you can see added the, uh, the line there. Um, so hopefully I'll have a version uh, pretty soon because my friend has a 3D printer. It's a resin 3D printer because the details is like uh, kind of really fine that I'll uh, be, be testing and getting to know them. So, yeah. Uh, how, how do you get the the that Oh, how do I get the wait? What do you mean? Uh, do you have a Uh, so this, I mean, I stamped, yeah, 3D printed this, right? So this is what my friend printed for just the, I don't have one with the character seal yet, so I'm going to get that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, this is the thing that my friend printed and I stamped, right? Um, so that what you saw there was stamped from this. Yeah. Do you know that uh, Foundry Gun Street here? Well, we're seeing, I think it's a lot more in Taiwan than they can print tents and stuff. Oh, no, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe you can give me the info after I can kind of look into some of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's like a whole bunch of things that are like that. Yeah, I, I want to understand a little bit more about the uh, how the error correction stuff works so that I could potentially you know, use more of the data or kind of a, have a, an interesting idea where, you know, it'd be cool to actually have a stamp, like a, you know, a tiny seal stamp that's like a digital, also, it's, it's your signature, but it's also a digital signature of the thing that you're stamping. Um, so still kind of thinking about, you know, ways that could work. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Thanks. <laughs>